um, the topic of this week is the Kiddush Hashem. Say this nefesh. In our parsha, you have the mitzvahs of Seif Kiddush Hashem. It's one of the, the Rambam considers it one of the Yag mitzvahs, the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem. And if you don't mind, quickly look inside the Chumash, Pasik Lamed Beis. Play Sechalalu as Shem Kodeshi. Do not be Mechalel. What does the word Chilul mean? Chilul literally means to make ordinary. The word Choyel, Chulin, is the opposite of Kodesh. Chilul doesn't mean technically to to profane or to defame. It simply means to make Choyel, to make ordinary. But when you make Hashem's name Choyel, it's 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 a chilul Hashem. It's it's a disgrace for the Amish there because Hashem is Kodesh, not Choyel. Choyel means ordinary. Well, it's a chalu Hashem Kodesh. You do not make my holy name ordinary. So this is the instant of chilul Hashem. And then it says, V'nikdashi b'teich b'nei Yisrael, and I will be sanctified amongst the Jewish people. And most of the mafarshim learned it's a mitzvah that the Rai said that the Rambam learns from here. That it's a mitzvah to say the kadesh Hashem Shemaim to make a kiddush Hashem. This is the subject that we're doing this week. I have sanctified you. I've taken you out of land of Mitzrayim. To be to you a God. So there's, there's a mitzvah say of inigdashti. Now here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. I'm not going to start with Rashi. I'm going to start with the Ebenezer and the Sepornu. And I'll tell you why I'm not starting with Rashi. Because the Ebenezer and the Sepornu do not interpret for like Sechalu and Venegdashti about Chil Hashem and Kiddush Hashem. In other words, we like to find different interpretations of the Psukim. Rashi says it's Kiddush Hashem, so we'll leave Rashi for third. We'll start with the Ebenezer on the first page. And he translates Lai Sechalu in a very Pashtistic way. I made the arrow near the bottom of the page. That Lai Sechalu, Hashem Kochim means, as I told you, do not make the Abish's holy name Choyl. And he says like this, Lezachalu is Shem Kodesh Yisak Ebenezer in Bnei Aaron Yedabish. This mitzvah, the Lezachalu, do not make ordinary my holy name, the Ebenezer holds is not a commandment on all Jews not to be Mechal Shem Shamayim, but it's a mitzvah on Koyanim, Ki Aparsha Dovka. Because the Pasha follows the beginning of our Pasha. Pasha's Emeid, of course, begins with the Kohuna, all the Allahs of Cain, the Allahs of Cain Godel, and then he goes on to talk about the Allahs of of Truma and Kodeshim and so on and so forth. And he says, The mitzvah that they're not allowed to shek for themselves, El Yisrael, Eim, Uben, Be'yemecha, they're not allowed to shek of a mother and her child on the same day. So, Hashem gave us mitzvahs. So, the Abish is saying to the Koyanim, since, I guess, in most cases, halachically, it's not necessary. One of the mitzvahs, one of the facts is that a Carbon can be shechted by a Yisrael also. A shechted by a Yisrael also. So we learn from this that shechit is kshed of bizarre. You don't have to have a koyin. Nevertheless, the fact is that koyinim shechted. So Hashem says, you know how to do a Yisrael also. A mother and a child, you know how to shechted on the same day. And that would be a chilol Hashem. Gam yitachin. Additionally, the v'lai sechalu goes on before. On after. She mitzvah v'chit sis b'chut zeh v'achtei dez l'kayinim. That when it says that when you shecht a carbon Taida to Hashem, there's an isid of, of leaving it over till the morning. That this is also going on the Kayhanim. In other words, Avinaz has a problem. Avinaz asks, what does Lesachal Hashem Kachim mean? What does it mean, don't sanctify? What does it mean, don't profane my name? What does it mean, sanctify my name? He doesn't want to connect it to Kiddush Hashem and Mesir Nefesh, because it's not Shittish al Mekra. So he wants to connect it to the Psukim before. Where do you have a Indian of Chilo Hashem Kachim before? So he says it's talking to the Kayanim. What was the most recent reference to the Kayanim? Pasik Chavches. Chavches and Lamed are speaking to all the Jewish people. All Jewish people could bring a carbon taita. Since he holds that it's speaking specifically to the Kayanim, so he says, V'lai Sechalalu, which is Pasik Lamed Beis, goes back to Pasik Chavches. Or a second pshat that it goes back on Pasik Chavches and Lamed. Even though Chavches and Lamed talk about a carbon taita, right, what's the Chiddush of Pasik Chavches and Lamed? Pasik Chavches and Lamed is that this Shlomim, doesn't give you two days and a night, right? When a person brings a carbon shlomim, a peace offering, what is the time frame for eating a peace offering? That day, the following night, and the day after. A carbon taida is a shlomim. It's a peace offering. But you add bread as a thanksgiving, 
And you eat it for a day and for a night. So the Teda says that a carbon tank is eaten that day. Don't leave it over till the following morning. So the Ebenezer says in his second shot, and this is also speaking to the Kayanim, um, and it's telling the Kayanim that when Yidin, who are Yisraelim, come to bring the carbon tayden, make sure they finish it by morning. Shahachel, and his proof is, he brings two rayas. The first ray is, Shahachel bepasha achakein, because in the next pasha, it begins David Abnei Yisrael, speak to the Jewish people. Since the next pasha begins David Abnei Yisrael, so now he's not speaking to the Bnei Yisrael, who is he speaking to? The Kayanim. The Eid Shani, a second proof, is because it says, do not profane my holy name, v'nektashti b'teich b'nei Yisrael. So he's saying to one group of people, do not profane my name, so there'll be a Kiddush amongst all Yidin, but all Yidin is somebody else. B'kitzanim, as the Ebenezer says, that the Yisrael is like Sechalu, and v'nektashti is on Kayanim. Hashem says to the Kayanim, you're chosen, you're special, you've got to keep the standards up, make sure things do not become Halal, ordinary, or you translated it profane, whether it goes up Pasuk of Chas, or Pasuk of Tess, it's, it's a detail. Okay, bottom line is, if an editor doesn't translate like Tachalal of Nekdashti, as the midst of the Isra of Chilal Hashem, and the midst of Kiddush Hashem, it's just, Kaidim have to keep Yidim Kaidish. Go ahead. Just that one thing you mentioned about, don't um, slaughter the, the mother and, the, and the, the, the offspring on the same time. I, I lost where that... What is that associated with? Then? That's a kill Hashem, and he's speaking of it to who then? The Kohen? The, let, let's start backwards. I'm sorry. The Ebenezer. No, no, I'm not asking it. The Ebenezer says, he asks himself, who is Hashem speaking to? Who is Who's he talking to? Right. He makes an assumption that he's talking to the Kohen. Oh. Why? Because Kohenim are different than everybody else. Right. They have to keep a certain standard. In other words, he reads it like this You're Kohenim. Do not let a chil Hashem happen. And if you will not let a chil Hashem happen, I will be sanctified amongst all the Jewish people. But that creates a problem for the Ebenezer. He finished talking to the Kainim a long time ago. The Kainim was the beginning of the Pasha, not most immediately. So he explains that either Oisev Esbenoi, which is paragraph 28, or perhaps even Taida, paragraph 29 and 30, which are really a mitzvah on every Jew, but the Kayin has to guard Jews from doing the wrong thing. So Hashem is saying to the Kayinim, it is your duty, Valaisa Khalalu. So they could be even a if they Thank you. That's the Ebenezer's Pshat. Now the Sipanu is very nice. Let's do the Sipanu second, and then we'll get to Rashi. Turn one page, and I made the arrow near the top. The Sipanu says like this. He's very interesting. Yeah, page tough tough exam. He says, Well, I say, Hello, shame, Kaddish. Hello, welcome. Since you see that my activities are on a very high level of Shlemus, this also follows what was discussed earlier about Karbanus. In Cain, therefore, it's obvious. That you are the select group, you are the, so to speak, the singled out ones, the sanctified ones, to walk in my paths. So since Hashem says to Yidin, I'm, I'm favoring you and I'm singling you out, that I'm having a very whole relationship with you, do not render ordinary, do not disgrace my holy name. How would you disgrace Hashem's holy name? With behaviors, with activities that are deficient, and shameful. In other words, for an ordinary person to do something which is not exactly honorable is not the end of the world. Right. But when the Abish favors you and treats you in a perfect way, you have a duty to behave in a way that honors the way Hashem honors you. Do not behave in a deficient manner. Ke'inyin, as it's written, that when the Jewish people came amongst the nations, Hashem's name was defamed. In other words, the guy is behaving a certain way that doesn't constitute the Chilol Hashem. The Jew duplicates the behavior of the guy, it becomes a Chilol Hashem because of the unique relationship that Ebishter has with Yidin. We had in Rashi, at the beginning of Pasha's Achrei, where Rashi says, Achrei follows all the locks of Tumentare, Achrei Moish, Nebani Aaron says, Rashi, the Goy Hashem gives no mitzvahs. Yidin gives mitzvahs. Because Hashem has such a 
we spoke about this also in one of the recent classes, such a fine relationship with Yidin, there's a very high expectation to retain the readiness for the Kedusha that Hashem gives us. We need to have a wholeness within ourselves. And living a life which is maguna, which is shameful, even if it's kosher, doesn't allow that wholeness and that Kedusha to, to reach us. And then he continues. So that's Alta Chalot. Just flip over the package. And I will be able to become holy amongst the Jewish people. Meaning to say, the prerequisite to v'nigdashtu is al tachalalu. Make sure don't behave in a compromised and a shameful way. And that will provide the possibility for v'nigdashti. Transits the sepon, who losses him on the flies. What is v'nigdashti? That by you being perfect, you create the possibility for me to perform wonders and miracles and to create a Kiddush Hashem. Kimesh and Adati Ba'amri, as I vowed when I said, I'm making a covenant, that opposite the Jewish people, Hashem will do wonders. But in order for Hashem to perform miracles, the, so to speak, the keli, the vessel, has to be healthy and whole. And that's what the Tehidah says, Al Techalalu Vinigdashti. He connects the Chilo Hashem with the Kiddush Hashem. If the vessel's smelly and not clean, it cannot be. The kedushin, the kedusha of the neflois. Vatam baze, and the explanation for it is ki am the mania deshem mekadishchem. It's taket true that I have sanctified you on the basis of ameti aschem eretz mitzayim. I took you out the land of Egypt. Please, Hashem, let him to be your God. Translate sepornu. What does it mean to be your God? Lihiyes manig aschem to govern and to lead you builti emtsay with no intermediate. Kemishpat hanivdali mechemer as Hashem's relationship is with Malachim who have no body at all, that they have no intermediate. So Hashem says to the Jewish people, you're in the physical world, and there are intermediates between Hashem and the physical world. The Malachim says, I want to have a personal relationship with you without any intermediates, which is only possible if you walk in my holy ways. If you walk in my holy ways, I can personally relate with you. If you don't walk in my holy ways, then I cannot work directly with you. We have to have the angels as intermediates. We have a chumish in Dvorim, the A possibly, but it's also mentioned in the beginning of chumish that it says, Hashem amin, that Hashem created the angels and the constellations to govern the nations. When Hashem singles you out, that Hashem has a relationship with you directly without the intermediate of the angels. So here it says, the, possibility, the way it is possible for Hashem to have this relationship with us without intermediates is called Kedusha, holiness and wonders. And the prerequisite to that is Leite Chalalu. And he brings the post text, Omer Oderech HaGoyim Al Talamdum Eish Tashmah Am Techasu. Leite means... To profane, he translated. Not to. Right. Do not learn the ways of the Goyim, because if you learn the ways of the Goyim, then you'll have to fear the signs of the heavens. And if you will not learn the ways of the Goyim, you will not have to fear the signs of the ways of the heavens. In other words, the idea, you have to, you have to wait a second, the idea that we, Ein Mahal Yisrael, the idea that we don't have to concern ourselves with the heavens is based on the fact that we're different than the Goyim. The Kedusha by Yidin, the purity by Yidin, the lack of Gnus and so forth by Yidin, allows for Hashem to have a personal relationship with us. Shayim. So the evidence that connects Atachal or Benigdashti to Kuhuna, the support are connected to all Yidin. But both of them say that the concept of al Techalalu is a prerequisite to Vinigdashti. What allows for the special relationship between Yidin and Hashem, called Kedusha, Betayach B'nei Yisrael, to be amongst the Jewish people, is the al Techalalu. Okay, and from here on out, essentially everybody is going to say that it's about uh, Chil Hashem and Kiddush Hashem. Well, Says Rashi, do not make a Chilul Hashem. What would constitute a Chilul Hashem laver al dovare mazidin to transgress my words with intent? Now, once we know that one is not allowed to defame Hashem's name by sinning, naturally, if you're not going to sin with intent and you're not going to defame Hashem, Hashem's name will be sanctified. In other words, Rashi goes with the assumption initially that Vinigdashti and Leitachalalu are the same thing in a negative and a positive form. So Rashi, it's a redundancy. Once you say Leitachalalu, Vinigdashti becomes unnecessary. Answers Rashi, it's a separate mitzvah. Leitachalalu is do not disregard Yiddishkeit in a brazen, in a wanton, in a disrespectful way. 
And Vinigdashti is Mesayr Atzmucha Vakadish me. Commit yourself and sanctify my name. Now you'll see as this unfolds that Kiddush Hashem is broader than dying. You know, Kiddush Hashem means sacrificing your life for the sanctity of David's name, which is a mitzvah in our parsha. But Kiddush Hashem means anything that you do that brings honor to the Abish is Kiddush Hashem. Anything that you do that brings dis- dishonor to the Abish is Chil Hashem. So he says, but Rashi explains it more narrowly, that it means to sanctify, to give your life for the sanctity of the Abish's name. It says Rashi, Yochel B'yochet. You would think that a person has an obligation to give his life and to sanctify the name of God even when they're alone. In other words, Kiddush Hashem is a personal connectedness to Hashem. Talmud Leim Abitech So when you're amongst the Jewish people. In other words, there's a unique concept of Kiddush Hashem when it's what's called in the Lashon of Lamdus of Allah Bepharhesia, publicly. There's Kiddush Hashem and there's Kiddush Hashem Barabim. There's the sanctity of Hashem's name and there's the public sanctification of Hashem's name. There are differences, there are literally differences in Halacha, in Jewish law, about private or public. We'll see how much of it we'll get to. But there's more significantly the spiritual distinction. Kiddush Hashem is being principled. But Kiddush Hashem is telling the world Kiddush Hashem. When a Kiddush Hashem is done in public, it's the highest thing it could possibly be. And then Rashi adds, Ukishu Meitz when one prepares himself to give his life to sanctify the name of Hashem, Yim Saddam announced Lomus, he should be ready to die. And not to expect the miracle. If you give yourself over to anticipating the miracle, the miracle don't happen. The Tanakh relates about the three prophets, Chalani, Mishal, Vazalia. Shalom, Master, Atzal, Amnas, Anais, that we're not anticipating a miracle. Like it's written, Shinem, this is Aramaic, from Daniel, the Hain, La Yediyah, the Hevel, Achmalka, the Gamer. They did not know if Hashem would save them or not. Um, in other words, Matzal, the Lay Matzal, whether Hashem would save them or not. Yediyah, La Hevel, Acha, only Hashem knew. And this is why the Abish they made the nest for them. Okay, so the Rashi says, Leitachalu means don't make a chilal Hashem, that's one mitzvah. V'negdashi, you make a kiddush Hashem, it's a separate mitzvah. And when a person is made himself a kiddush Hashem, he should do it altruistically. So Rashi introduces us to the idea of V'negdashi being a mitzvah, so I say, of kiddush Hashem. Now you'll see, mitzvah Hashem, time allowing, the Rebbe's famous commentary, where it says in Hasidus, that kiddush Hashem is not a mitzvah. In Hasidus, it's written explicitly, it's based on the mind of the middle of the Rebbe, that Nesidus Nevesh HaKidosh Hashem is not a mitzvah. Here we read a Chumash Rashi, the Rambam Paskins this way, that it's one of the 630 mitzvahs, that a person should be made in Nevesh HaKidosh Hashem. This is where we're headed. This is all in the plans. Okay? Turn the page, and let's do the Ramban now. The Ramban is short and sweet, no long stories. It's the back of the first page. No, no, I'm sorry. It's back of the second page. Flip two pages. It's on page Tov Tzadik Test. At the top of the page, I made you an arrow. V'nikdash t'b'teich in Yisrael, says Ramban. Al-Das Rabbi Seinu, our rabbis hold that it's a mitzvah, so say it's a positive commandment. This is the position of Rashi. It's not the position of Inezah and Sipurnu. Sh'nikad v'sheshmei. We should give sanctity to Hashem's name. The mitzvah in the performance of mitzvahs. What does it mean to sanctify Hashem's name in the performance of mitzvahs? Le'horeg aleyhem. To give our lives for them to lay navid and not to transgress. And the Ramban says, was that time? And the reason for this is, Hamaytzi Eschem, Be'eretz Mitzam Re'ezachem Lakim, because Hashem has redeemed us from Egypt to be our God. Shultam, that this idea that Hashem took us out of Egypt is a reason, not specifically for Kiddush Hashem, but Yichlo Kol HaMitzvah. The reason we have all the mitzvahs is because Hashem redeemed us from Mitzrayim. That we should go as far as sanctifying Hashem's name to, to perform them. We are his slaves. So the Ramban agrees with Rashi that is a mitzvah say of Kiddush Hashem. Okay, now turn the page of the Rambam. Now we have two Rambams here. The first Rambam is the Rambam is Allah Kiddush Hashem. We're going to learn the beginning of the Pedic and the end of the Pedic. You have four pages of Rambam. I, I did a lot of copying. <laughs> so your shame is... <laughs> so your shame is box will be filled quicker. Um, but uh, the technical office you can learn on your own. I mean, this is one Pedic in Rambam. We're going to learn the beginning and the end because this... Beginning and end of the Chesed of Rambam is not just Halachet, it's a certain hashkofa, a certain philosophy to it. After we learn the Hilchas 
he says, Yeda Rambam, we're going to read the Yeda Sashmad. And uh, let me say this now. Rambam was an amazing personality. Uh, it doesn't need to be said. But the Rambam is an enigmatic personality. He's full of contradiction. In other words, if you read all the Rambam's writings, you are convinced by a shadow of a doubt, two or three people minimum. No way one man wrote all this. Because the personalities of his different writings are not only different, they're contradictory. Sometimes the Rambam is the epitome of an elitist. In the beginning of the Meir Nebuchim, he writes to his Talmud, for whom the Meir Nebuchim was written, Rabbi Yisif, from Baghdad, I'd rather write to one smart person than to 10,000 monkeys walking on two legs. This is, this is my manadir. And that expression appears more than once in the Rambam's writings. On the other hand, when you read Rambam's Yigar Sashmad, he sounds like the Bashantif. What's the Yigar Sashmad? It's called also Yigar Sashmad. No, the Yigar Sashmad. It's called the Yigar Sashmad. It has another name, I forget what it is. The Yigar Sashmad was written as a response to a Psak Din of a Paisik. Jews in Yemen had a lot of tzadahs. As a rule, the Muslims were pretty fair to the Jews, to be honest. We suffered much more under the Christians than under the Muslims but in historic times. But there were a group of Muslims who were fanatics. They were called Almohads. Al- I don't know what they're called today. Maybe they're called Moadin, Almohad, whatever. Maybe it's just an evolution of the name. What do they call themselves today? The Modi'in, maybe it's a, it's an, the word has developed, but in the Russian intent, it's al that's how it's spelled. They were all over the place. They were in Spain, they were in North Africa. Rambam spent his life running away from them. Rambam was born in Spain, spent time in Morocco, in Tunisia, in Israel. He'd be, they wanted to, because there, a little while, there, he passed through, he says, their idea was that you're not allowed to tolerate non-believers, invalids, in, infidels. And they, uh, they killed people. They had enormous influence in Yemen, and they gave Jews uh, three choices to convert to Islam, to leave the country, or to face the sword. Jews left, Jews faced the sword, and Jews converted to Islam. And there was a Yid, a Rav, a Paisik, a big rabbi, who wrote very scathingly, very, very critically of the Yemenite converts. And then Alma wrote a letter that is so, it's such a piece of Alma's Israel, it's amazing. The, whole, the, the gist of the letter is, how dare you? <laughs> like, you call yourself a rabbi. And he proceeds, the first painting, he starts off by saying, there's this person who calls himself a rabbi, who condemns all these Jews and says that they're no good, and there's nothing to do with them, and so on and so forth. And um, he goes on to say, he brings from the Tanakh, Chumash, Moshe Rabbeinu spoke critically of the Jews, how Hashem punishes him. Yeshua speaks critically of the Jews, Hashem punishes him. That he goes through the whole thing. Yeshaya speaks critically of the Jews, Hashem punishes him. Elio speaks critically of the Jews, Hashem is punishing him. How dare you criticize the Jewish people? And he goes into this whole thing about how A, you can't blame them. B, to convert to Islam is not the biggest aid in the world. Especially since all they were asked to do was perform lip service. They were not asked to do any worships. They were not even being told to stop practicing Yiddishkeit. They were just told, do, you know, say you're a Muslim. But in the course of this, the Rambam explores the whole issue of Kiddush Hashem. And it's very comprehensive. I didn't copy the whole letter because <laughs> that would be, I'd be carrying an extra briefcase for that. I copied chapter 2, Dalit, Pedig Dalit. In, by the way, in Pedig Gimel, in chapter 3, which precedes Pedig Dalit, the Rambam writes about big Rishoyim, evil men, like Nebuchadnezzar, like Egle Melech Moyov, who did small mitzvahs, tiny things to honor Hashem, and how the Ebishter honors them for their minute acts of goodness. In other words, you do the smallest thing of Kiddush Hashem, how awesome the reward is. So the whole structure of the letter is so sensitive to Yidin under siege, you can't imagine. The Yemenites to this day celebrate the Rambam because of this letter. The Ahav, that the Yehudi Teiman had for Rambam was amazing. In many, in many manifestations, you know, they, they used to say in Kaddish, the Yemenites, you think Lubavitch is a Meshugayim, Bechayechin, Vyemechin, Vechayi, Rabbeinu, Meishe, Ben Maimen. They would mention Mashiach in our lifetime, and in our days, and in the life of Rabbeinu, Meishe, Ben Maimen. That's what they would say in Kaddish. That's how much they loved him. And historically, the Yemenites, some Zichy Kochtel, Sifriya Rambam, and to be sure, we're all benefits, beneficiaries of that because their copies of the Rambam's writings are very authentic. And, uh, you know, the Yemenites have lived in isolation all this time. Now they're publishing all the Rambam's work from the Yemenite Kisfeyad. And it's, 
but the, this, this, the root of it was this letter, this letter of Avas Yisrael. So we'll learn first a few halachas of Kiddush Hashem in the Rambam. Now they're most... No, in Mitzrayim, Egypt. He was in Israel for a short time, but he lived in Egypt. This is a story unto itself. It's buried in Tveria, because that's where Mashiach is, the Sanhedrin are going to return. The Tveria, Tiberius. What do you mean, he passed away in Israel? He passed away in, in Mitzrayim, he lived. Yeah. So let's read Rambam. Okay, here we go. Peir Hamishi. Kol Beis Yisrael Metzulun HaKiddush Hashem Agol. All Jewish people are commanded to sanctify the great name of Hashem. Chazeh, this one. Shalem because it's written in the I will be sanctified by Teich B'nei Yisrael amongst the Jewish people. Umuz Harin were also warned, Shaloi Lechalaloi, not to defame. And as I told you before, Chilol means simply to render ordinary. Chilol Hashem means to make the name of Hashem plain. When you make the name of Hashem plain, then he's the same as uh, Bill Clinton. And that's not so good, if you know what I'm saying. Or George Bush. Shenemar, as it's written, do not make my name ordinary. Now the Rambam, of course, this is typical Rambam. Rambam had a belief that you read the Tanakh, read Chumash, and you read his Sefer, and you read any other Sefer. So whenever he brings a mitzvah, he always brings a Pasuk. So he brought the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem and said, Shenemar, the Nekdashti. He brings the love of Chilul Hashem and says, Shenemar, the Nekdashti. These are two separate mitzvahs. Kiddush Hashem is one mitzvah, and Chilul Hashem is a separate mitzvah. Okay, so what does this mean? Kishama David Tichov, Magoy gets up. Vieta says Yisrael, and he will force a Jew. Laver al Achas, we call mitzvahs amuris betera, to transgress any of the mitzvahs in the data. O Yahar Genu, or he will kill him. Yahar Vahyarik, do the sin. Don't die. If a guy says to you, do Yahweh, I'll kill you, you're not, you're not allowed, in fact, to give your life, because Tata says you're supposed to live. Shenema the mitzvahs, because it's written about mitzvahs as a rule, Ashayasa Aesam Ha'adam Vachai Bohem. Mitzvahs are supposed to give us life, not death. So if a goy is coercing you to do a sin, dying would be the opposite of life. Don't commit the sin. You're supposed to live. The Chai Bohem says the Chazal, the rabbi says he's supposed to live with mitzvahs, Lash Yamas Bohem, and not to die from them. The Emes, the Loyava, if a person decides to commit suicide, to be a tzaddik, and to sanctify his life, not to do the smallest sin, paskins, the Ramba, Marezim, Eschayev, and Nashi. It's a very severe Aved. He's not allowed to do it. But Medvar Mamurim, you'll see later on, the Chinuch speaks about this, and of course, Chasidus talks about it, that there's exceptions to this rule. There's, actually, Ramba most has exceptions to this rule. We'll see it soon. Medvar Mamurim, when is this speaking Bishar Mitzvahs? By most Mitzvahs. Chutz, with the exception of Avedis Gechavim, Begili Arayi, Tishkech Hazdabim. Idol worship, immorality, and murder. That when it comes to these three sins, you're supposed to die. Now, I want to make an observation. Because this is a real practical scenario. If there is a medicine that involves paganism, and there's a matriv of pikuach nefesh, a person's life is on the line, you're not allowed to take that medicine. People don't realize this. Ein misrapin ba'atzi hasheda. You're... When a person comes to medicine, we don't worry if it's a serious issue, you don't worry about gelatin, you don't worry about anything. You don't worry about Shabbos, you don't worry about Yom Kippur, to save a life. But if there is a medicine that involves a disorder, and it, it's a life and death illness, you're not permitted to take the medicine. People don't realize this. And in today's day and age, with all the Eastern stuff, it becomes a real, possible, halachic shayleh. Ein mislap masashe, you're not allowed to heal yourself, even in the matter of a pekuach nefesh, dech akol ateyda kula. Saving a life pushed away the whole Tata, chutz, with the exception of the Zadig of the Shrikh's Dabim. And in other words, people always think of the guy with the cross and the sword. It could be much solar so a person's got a video and there's some uh, pagan doctor who can perform some kind of a ritual that would cure that person, but it involves a Veda Zara. You're not allowed to do it. Awesome. Um Ava Sola Shaved is Elu, but these three sins. In Yema later on the page, if you will be told. Avera lachas mehen. Tehoreg, transgress, page 11 now. Yes. Transgress any of them, or I'll kill you. Tehoreg val A person must die and not transgress. Okay? And this is called the Sirus Nefesh. You should know that in Hasidus I've seen an observation that they separate two things. There's Mesiris Nefesh, and there's Mesiris Nefesh al Kiddush Hashem. This mysterious nefesh giving you life, and this mysterious nefesh sanctified by the name of God. So, what the Rambam holds, whether the Rambam draws this distinction or not, I do not know. But in Chassidus, this distinction is drawn. 
not doing an Aveda and giving your life for it is called Mesiris Nefesh. It's not yet Kiddush Hashem. But Ben Varmavur, this idea that when a person gives his life not to do a sin, it's considered only Mesiris Nefesh, and it's only for these three Avedas, is Bizman Sha'eit Yechavim is Kavin Lanoas Atzmi. If the Goy intends to get you to sin because he has something to gain, he, he wants you to do this because he has something to gain. Um, so then, these halachas apply. That for most mitzvahs, most avedas, you must transgress and live, with the exception of these three. Basically, tells you to build you a home or cook a meal on Shabbos. You have to do it. And so on. Avo, in the skavon lavidi al mitzvahs bulvad, when the goy is intent, is not because he has something to gain. Because he wants to defame Yiddishkeit, he wants to mock and discredit in Yiddishkeit. If you're alone, the ancient is told, no Jews are present. I'm sorry, you should do the Aveda and not transgress. The unsay if he is and not get killed. The unsay if he's coercing you, you should do the Aveda. When there are ten Jews around, which is called Padhestya, Yaharig Va Yavid. Then you have to get killed. Any mitzvah. Huh? Any mitzvah. Even if the intent of the guy is to make you sin, allow mitzvah, mishara, mitzvah, lovad, any other mitzvahs. This is the second halacha. The first halacha is when it comes to murder, adultery, and idolatry, you have to die no matter what. The second is if he wants you to do another Aveda, and his intent is to get you to do something bad, a defamation. So then it depends if it's public or private. But there's one more category. And that is when the world has gone bananas. <laughs> this is all speaking which is not the time of the decree. In a severe time of decree, which means an evil king rises up. Like or his fellows. And he makes decrees about the Jewish people of Atal Dasim to nullify their religion. Or any mitzvah. So then the halacha is Yehorig va Yaver Afilu al Aches Mishal Mitzvah. You have to die and not transgress. Even the other mitzvahs. Bein Nenas B'Derech Asada. Whether this was public, Bein Nenas Kenel Bein Yichav. Even if it's private. This is the third category. This third category is called Shas Hashmad, at a time of coercion. If one guy picks on one Jew and says, "Do this Avera," Rambam says. The distinction will be between private and public. He wants to do the Aveda because he wants to mock you. If it's private, do the Aveda. If it's public, you have to makad Hashem. But if it's Shas Hashma, the Goyim have just decided that they're going to defame and desecrate Yiddishkeit, every Jew, for the tiniest Aveda, even if they're alone, has to be makad Mesa Nefesh al Kiddush Hashem. The second and third category, this is already a Yiv Kiddush Hashem. This is not doing it as the mitzvah of Mesa Nefesh, giving your life not to sin. This is doing the mitzvah of sanctifying Hashem's name. You'll see later how this idea develops more. In other words, not doing idolatry, adultery, and murder is giving your life not to sin. This is giving your life to bring sanctity to the One question. Is this, is this hold true for when the, there's, a, there's an evil king has risen and you um, everyone's under the, the... And so the... Is it hold true for all of theirs or just the three that you... All of theirs. In that case, you must give your life under all of theirs, even if it, because you made the distinction earlier. There's three halachas. Right. One halacha is when the guy wants to sin for his personal because gain. Then it's Only for those three. Gotcha. It doesn't make a difference if it's public or public. Because those three, the not sinning is not a matter of sanctifying Hashem's name. It's you're not allowed to sin. Right. These sins you're not allowed to commit, even if it costs you your life. The second category is where the guy wants you to sin to defame Yiddishkeit, but it's personal. If it's personal, it depends. If it's private, you can sin, or you must sin. If it's public, you must sanctify the name of God. But if it's a, if it's a disease, the guy will just have to get the Jews to, des- to destroy their Yiddish cry, then even if it's private, you will have to sanctify the name of Hashem for any of it. Those are three categories. Halacha Dawat. Now call me, any individual, by whom it is written, you're not allowed to die, you must sin. And he allowed himself to die and did not transgress. He's forfeited his life. It's, it's, it's the worst Aveda. You're not allowed to commit suicide. You're not allowed to die 
because you decide to be extra religious. Now you'll see later on that this is not so simple, because historically we know many people, including our Rabbeim, who were Mais and uh, in areas where Allah they were not permitted, according to this stipulation. The Chalmi and any person, about whom it is written, die and do not transgress. The Neherag, and in fact he gave, he paid the highest price for being a Jew, and he was murdered, though the oven did not sin. This is being in sanctity in the name of Hashem. The Mahaya Basarami Yisrael, if it was a public event of Kiddush Hashem, had a Kiddush as Hashem Barabim. It's the sanctity of Hashem's name in public, which is the highest level. Kedania, like Daniel, who was thrown to the lions, Chalani Mishal Vazari, who was thrown into the fire, and Rabbi Akiva Chaveirav, who didn't survive. <laughs> Rabbi Akiva and his friends were murdered brutally um, by the kings of Rome. These are considered the people killed by kings. There's no level high of The Gemara says this in Psachim, right? That Haluge Malucha Ein Adam Yochal Lama Bim Chitasan. The people who were murdered by the Goyim, nobody could stand in their Mechita. Frag the Gemara. The Gemara asks, who does it mean Haluge Malucha? Ta'akiva v'chaveira, like Rabbi Akiva and his friends. They have many other merits. And the Gemara no. Pamayis two two Yidin who were about Kharim, they were jazz, they were they were comedians, and they would play this whole shtick, the whole shtick to keep Yiddish women from a for Khil Hashem. And there was once a situation where they had to give their lives to protect the Jewish woman. And they were otherwise just ordinary Jews. About them it is written, Allah Haraq Nikolayim, that Harugi Malucha, Ainad Yochalam bin Khitazan. The people who die in the Kavish Maimirab, this is the highest Madhra that could possibly be. You should know that Rebbe mentioned by Fabregen. I heard this once, and I suspect he said it more than once. I never forget not just what the Rebbe said, but how the Rebbe said it, the tone. I remember where I stood. The Rebbe was talking, but he suddenly paused, and he said in a very soft, very low, but very emotional tone that the, the terminology Holocaust and genocide is objectionable. It wasn't the Holocaust, and it wasn't genocide. It was Zex Muyon Yidin Gigangin Lekade Shem Shamayim Barabim. It wasn't what he said, it was how he said it. Six million Jews walking to sanctify the name of God publicly. That's how the Rebbe saw it. To a level that ain't nothing to a halam of Chitas. Fableya Neman, regarding them, is written, Kelach Harag and Kolayim. For you, on your behalf, we were killed all day long. Nechshav nukatayin tifchu were considered like sheps alach nebach to the slaughter. Valeyem nem and regarding them is written isfuli chasidoi. Gather to me my chasidim. Keir seibrisi alei zavach who have fulfilled my covenant to the point of zevach of, of zevach of murder. Now, the chomish nem arbe the third possibility. If someone has written about him yaharig vayava that they should die. The avar valei neir again he has transgressed and not died. It's quite a test to be told. Don't worship idols and, and not to worship the idols. It's called a chilol Hashem. Then why about Sodom Yisrael? If it was a public event, had a chilol as Hashem barabi, it's a public desecration. Ubitul mitzvah say it's also negating a positive mitzvah. She kiddush Hashem, which is the sanctity of Hashem's name. The other our mitzvahs lesser than he has violated the negative commandment. She chilol Hashem. Again, you see how Rambam, the halachic person, it's two mitzvahs. It's not two sides of one mitzvah, one mitzvah is Chilul Hashem, a separate mitzvah is Kiddush Hashem. But there's no punishment. If, you, if a person was in a situation where his life was on the line and he didn't do the Aveireh, he didn't do the Aveireh, so he's, he's, it's bad, it's a Chilul Hashem, it's the opposite of Kiddush Hashem, but you can't punish a person. You can't punish a person. You know, historically, there were many Jews who were called Anusim, they were forced. The children had a film uh, what they call, what do they call it? An animated film about Rashi. It was done very, very well. And uh, Rashi was presided over Gezeira Titno, the first crusade in Hebrach. Titno, 1096. Rashi passed away 1105. And um, so there was there were a lot of Jews who were murdered. There were three famous cities: Gezeira Shum, Ashpira, Vemaizem, Agentia. I don't like say anything. Germany. How do you say Ashpira? Sapphire, Speyer in Yiddish. I don't know how you say it in English. Um, Shapiro. It could be the name of a city, Shapiro. Worms and mines. They had Heilike Kedisha. The Yidin were holy. 
and that Abanim gathered Yidin and Shul on Shavuos, before Shavuos, after Shavuos, it was this time of the year. And they push it, prepared Yidin, and the says, no, Hashem. And whole communities, to the last person, what is Gishach no Kedosh Hashem? But there were exceptions to people who couldn't withstand the, the, the test. You know, it's not a, it's not a joke. <laughs> so after the crusade, they came back to Yiddishkeit. And they would show up and show, and people ostracized them, they wanted to do it then. And it actually stood up. You know, I said, who are you? You know, that's, you know how he, he gave a COVID to one of these Anusim. You know, the same thing like that Ambam. What do you know about being in such a situation? It's Paka Achil Hashem, and it's missing an opportunity for Kiddush Hashem, but Oinish. Vafa became the Pnesh of Abiyainis, since it was coerced, Ain Malkanai say there's no flogging, just flip over the page. Just flip, don't turn the page, flip over the packet. Vain Sadakhlaim, Mashayim, Amit, and Aisim, the best. They don't kill them in Bezin. I feel a harag ba'enis. Even if the sin that he was told to was, you kill somebody else, it will kill you. But the Gemara says, why is your blood any better than his? But if you murdered another Jew to save your own skin, it's terrible. But there's no consequence. Okay. Enough. Turn, no, we're not finished, Rama. Turn the page. We're going to spend a lot of our nights. Turn the page. I want to read Halachas Yud and Yeralaf. Okay. Sorry? It comes out that Rambam is totally um, disagreeing with Sipurno and uh, Ebenezer, huh? In Pshut Mikra, completely. The Pshut Mikra, Sipurno and Ebenezer explain that it has nothing to do with Kiddush Hashem at all. And the Rambam holds it two mitzvahs to say. Yud. Kola Eivim Edaiti Balayenis, any person who transgresses any sin with intent, without coercion. Allah has Mikol Mitzvah Samur is Batayra, any word of the mitzvah is found in the Tayra. Bish'at Nefesh with intent. Lahaches and his intention is to, so to speak, anger Hashem, to tell Hashem, it's a chil Hashem. Okay? Well, the fiqh nem b'shua sheker, when you make a false vow, it's a, it's a profanity of Hashem's name. Vim over ba'asadami Yisrael, if you did this sin with intent publicly, it's a chil Hashem, but it's a public defaming, a public uh, profaning of the Abish and his name. If you stay away from an Aveda, or you also mitzvah, and you did a mitzvah, for no particular reason in the world, not out of fear, nor to receive honor, to honor the Ebishter, as the withheld the temptation with the wife of Petifer, so Kiddush Hashem doesn't necessarily mean dying, that's the word. Kiddush Hashem means bringing honor to the Eibishter. Bringing honor to the Eibishter. Yisuf HaTzadik, who would have known Yisuf HaTzadik? Who was going to tell him or Yisuf HaTzadik? It was, he did it, but this was the right thing to do. It's the biggest Kiddush Hashem. I heard years ago a word, a Gavaldik a word. You're a Balkade, most of you don't know the Chumash that well. But it says in the Chumash, it says in the Chumash, that the wife of Petitha was on Yisuf's case. So she waited till there was a Chagah, everybody left the home, and now she, this is her chance. Isa came into the house, lost his malachta, there's even an opinion, now she says. Rav Shmuel, one says to do his work, the other one says he was going to do an Aveda. And then it says, Vayimoyin. He refused. The Vayimoyin has a trap of a Shalshelas. Three puzzles. Vayimoyin. Three times. You read the same, very, very animated sound, three times. So there's a word that Vayimoyin you have to read three times. Like this. Vayar Yasef Mara Oviv Negde. Vayimoyin. Vav Yud Mem Aleph Nun. Vayar Yasef Mara Oviv Negde. Joseph saw the countenance of his father before him. Vayim Yankev. Mechashen Ato Nimchak. And Jacob said, Your name will be erased from the breastplate of the Kaigal. Vayira Yasef Melatame Yes Nafshe. And Joseph was afraid to, 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 to contaminate his soul. It's a good word. You read the Vayamoyin three times, it says, Vayar, Yasef, Mara, Aviv, Negde. Vayem, Yankev, Mechay, Shinata, Dimchak, Vayira, Yavoyin, Yasef, Mazam, Yisnash. And the Ramam says, Kiddush Hashem. Now, Yiralef, this is the Vedic Salach, Yiralef brings it all practical here. Vayyara Yosef Milatame Yasnafsha. He was afraid to make himself tummy. The second one is Vayyame Yankev, Mechay Shinata Nimchak. 
And the third one is, Vayyara, Vayyumah, and Yesef, and Otam, and Yesef, 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 and and they're not such big things. But, if they performed by Adam, God, but Teda, a man who was great in Teda, who's, who's renowned in Hasidus, there's a different standard. You'll see momentarily that a Talmud Chacham is not a lot of buy on credit. You have to pay cash. Because of how it's construed by others. This is Chal Hashem that's personal for the individual person. The people are going to be able to sing and laugh. That great rabbi, you know what he did. For somebody else, it's perfectly permitted. For him, there's an infachil of Hashem. Though they're not Avedis, there's a chil of Hashem, it's a disgrace of the Abish's name. Again, for example, if he purchases, it doesn't pay immediately. He has money. The nimtu hamechem tevim whom I keep on the people, the the salespeople are demanding, and he's making them wait. And um, another person, you can make somebody, you can hold a bill in a grocer. A tam kochem is not allowed. Pay, pay immediately. Don't owe people money. You know what the Gemara says. No, the halacha is eved leivel ish malva. You borrow a nickel, shavu puta, a nickel from a person. Halachically, you're his slave. That's a din. Eved leivel ish malva. Why would you want to be somebody's slave? A mortgage, okay, a quarter of a million dollars, half a million dollars, and you owe it to a bank, to a conglomerate, nobody knows even which person. Slave to the bank. Ah? Slave to the bank. Yes, they take a slave to the bank. Yes. <laughs> but if you owe somebody money, you know, some people borrow money, it's not that they're not intending to pay it back. They're in no rush to pay it back. It's a mitzvah, it's a mitzvah to pay a debt, and to pay it immediately. Pay it. A guy says, you don't have to pay me. It's a mitzvah to pay a debt. It's a mitzvah. And it's ever level is malver. And for a time of chacham, it's a chil l'shem. Chil l'shem. Oi, another example. Sheyar be b'schek. If a time of chacham gets frivolous and silly, he laughs and he chuckles out loud. Oi, b'achilu shsiye falami ha'aretz. He sits and eats and he shoots the breeze, as they say in American. He chills. He wastes his time. What's wrong? What's wrong? It's not appropriate. It's not appropriate. There's a certain honor that you have to have for yourself. Or be named amongst them. You should know there's a letter from Friedrich Nereb, which is published in the introduction to the Kuntas of Tzachayim, which the Rebbe actually gave out to every one of us many years ago. It's a very interesting letter, and the letter, when it was disseminated, made Poland burn. Friedrich was living in Poland, and in this letter he praises the Litvische, and by association he's a little bit criticizing the Chesidish and the Velta Gebed. I'll just tell you the story briefly. The Rebbe wrote this letter. And the letter begins, in response to your question. It was not written by any particular person. And the Friedrich Rebbe gave the letter to Rebbe Zalman Gurari, who was a Bachar at the time, and told him to publicize the letter. The Friedrich Rebbe was in Perkesdorf. Perkesdorf is a little city outside of Vienna, Austria, where all the Gedele Yisrael used to go for healing. And it was such a prominent Jewish place that they made the Knesset Gedele there. The Gedele, people came there for, in other words, all the Gedele were there. Summertime, all the big Goyim with their Talmudim. Thousands of big Lomdim appeared in Paris. The Zvitek Ebu was there. So he gave Zalman Gerari the letters of the Talmud. It's in Austria. It's near Vienna. So Zalman Gerari didn't know what to do. So he came to the Rebbe, the Rebbe of Gesundheit. And he says to the Rebbe, what should I do? The Rebbe says, sit on a bench and read it. And if anybody's curious, know what you're reading, you can give them a copy. So he sat on the bench and he read it, and one person asked him for a copy, and then don't ask. He, he couldn't, have, he didn't have enough copies. In this letter, the whole, the thrust of the letter is called Midas HaHishtavos, which is so American. Midas HaHishtavos is discussed in Sifri Musar. Lemal Yusar. Midas HaHishtavos is Shivisi HaShem Lenegi Samad, and everything is Shavah B'Shavah, that's the Baal But he translated, don't worry about it, the first Shtikl, the, the first Shtikl Tzavah but he translated Mishnah Shabbos negatively. That all people are equal. A Talmud Chacham, a Rosh Hashiva, a Balabas, a Garbage, everyone's equal. And the Fidik Yabba says that's how it's supposed to be. A Talmud Chacham has to honor himself and honor his Tater. A Yeshiva Bach is different. It's different. It's a different dress, different tone, different demeanor, different walk, different way of eating. And he says that his, he goes back in the history of Lita, how they honor Talmud Chacham. And how the Tamil Chacham honored the Tere. And how it brought such honor and such glory and such holiness 
into Yiddish homes. Anyway, can you imagine the Fidi could have complimenting the Litvish and criticizing the Hasidim? It was terrible. It was bad news. Well, well the Mitzvah was is that by the by, by Bochum in um, in Poland, the Rebbe felt that there was a lack of kedusha. There was lack of everything is relative. Believe me, there were a lot of the of Yeshiva Bochum. The Fidi could have felt that they need to be more aware. A Yeshiva Bochum needs to know that he represents the Ebrister. He's different. The Litvish then were no better. He spoke about the Litvish from hundreds of years before. But that was enough, <laughs> you know. So Zalman Gray walks back in some Friedrich and Abin, and the Friedrich Rebbe asks him very naively, Nu, was Herzog and Gas? What's happening in the street? So the Zalman Gray says to Friedrich Rebbe, it's brent a fire. A fire is burning. Says the Friedrich Rebbe says, Nu, them Vasir and Lesh, take water and put out the fire. <laughs> it doesn't device. But anyways, Midas Ayishtavas means there's a breakdown in the fact that some people, not everybody, some people are worse, some people are better, are ordinary. Some people are on a pedestal. You're a Talmud Chacham, act it. Talmud Chacham can't walk in the street eating some uh, sandwich kiss, uh, sunflower seeds, and chewing gum. It's not a crime. There's a higher standard. And for Talmud Chacham, Hashem, sitting around to trust the people, drinking beer and laughing, is not an Aveda. For Talmud Chacham, it's a Chil Hashem. Sorry? Well, a Fabrengen has a tzir of a Fabrengen. And a Fabrengen is also different. A Fabrengen doesn't mean you put mashka on the table. You can act like a Balchai. That's not a Fabrengen. That's a, a wild party. Oi. Or, I'm six lines from the bottom. Shadiburi Mabrias, the way he talks to people in Benachas. It's not with sufficient calm. Veinim Akabim, but he doesn't greet them with a smiley face. The Gemara says, Rabbi Yechanan said, the great Rabbi Yechanan, no man ever greeted me before I greeted him. Rabbi Yechanan was a god lador. He was a leader of the generation. He didn't walk around with his nose up in the air waiting for people to honor him. He says, nobody ever greeted me before I greeted them. And the Pekiyahu says, Makabu is called Adam and Sayyid Parim Yafas. Greet people, Sayyid Parim Yafas. A person who is very combative and angry at the Chil Hashem. And similar things. And the Rambam, of course, qualifies. And of course, it depends on where the you are. And the greater the you are, you need to be more particular. Go beyond the letter of the law. Moreover, if the Chacham is very particular, and in fact, he did speak to people calmly. And he's very, very comfortable and integrated amongst people. And he greets them with a smiling countenance. And when the people embarrass him, he takes it. He doesn't embarrass them. He honors them. People who dishonor him. He's honorable in his business affairs. He doesn't waste hours and hours and hours sitting by ordinary people's parties. He's not seen constantly studying Teda. Out of Petzitis, wrapped in Tzitis, Mukhtu Betzilin, crowned with Tzilin. The Ace of Bechomaisa with Nimi Shuris Adin, and does all of his deeds beyond the letter of law. On the other hand, he's not a recluse and a hermit. In other words, his life becomes something that people say, This is how I want my children to look. People praise him. The A of him, and love him. Umis avim lamaisem and desire his behavior. Hareiz a kiddush Hashem. It's a kiddush Hashem. V'all of our of amen. And regarding him, it is written. V'yemer li avdi yata. And Hashem says to me, "You are my slave, Yisrael, Israel." Hashem bechol spot. I boast with you. There is the quote this pasuk a lot. Yisrael, Hashem bechol spot. I just want to mention one catch. There's a, a, a an expression from Friedrich and Rebbe. Which is brought to the Buddha. The Fidik Rebbe was a very interesting Rebbe. He had a notebook of quotable quotes. Quotable quotes. And Lav Dafke from Tater, from Chazal. In a whole notebook of quotable quotes. And I saw a page with maybe 30 or 40 of such quotes. And one of them was Taiva Hapricious Imabrius. 
It's good to be parish, separated. In Mabrias, with people. The Habadidus and aloneness and solitude with amongst men. In other words, you can be a parish and a buddhud. You can have a certain not aloofness, cleanliness, purity. A, a space that nobody can invade and you're amongst people people feel that you, there's something higher and above it's private but you're not locking it up you just know how to be amongst people and there's a certain refinement there's a certain upliftedness about the person Felix Heber describes one of his Zaydis from the times of Alter Rebbe and before who had this characteristic Teida Haprishus, you're amongst people, you can sit in a room full of people, and everybody knows you're there, and you're very nice to everybody, and you're alone. It's different. You're different. You're different. Look at the pictures of the Rebbe before he was a Rebbe, when he sits by a wedding. He's sitting in a room full of people, he's alone. Look at the pictures. Sometimes he's frighteningly alone. Sitting in a room, sitting at the head of the table, we get them covered, and he's someplace else, and he's still. Look at the photographs. You have the Makadash Yisrael. Take a look after the class. Before he was Rebbe, he's in his own thoughts. In any case, we learned Ramba. And guess what? It's 11 11. We haven't even started. Now, Rabbi I, 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 I want to get to the issue. Here you have a whole Arik Segeras Ashmad. Rambam enumerates five things that negate the Look on the first page. Look on page Kufi Dalit. Just, I'm going to read, I don't have time, unfortunately. If I had another hour, I'd go into this. He says, I want to speak of five categories. Category number one, When a person is coerced, forced to do an Aveda, the difference between one mitzvah and another, which we discussed in Rambam. The different categories of the defaming of Hashem's name and its consequence. Hasugah Shlishi, the third category, Bedarges Hanarogam on Kiddush Hashem, the levels of those who die on Kiddush Hashem, Ra'anusim, and those who are forced, Be'enus Hashmad, with coercion of being forcibly converted, and their status. Hasugah Ravi, the fourth category, Be'enus Hashmad Hazes, specifically this event of Shmad, which was an Islamic event of Shmad, that they were not expected to do anything pagan, because Islam doesn't have any other desire in it. Hamokim Yivatleu Amen Hashem should nullify it. Wait, no, I skipped a lot. No, Matarach Adam last is what people do. And as Sugar Hamishi Beida, the fifth category is to inform us, Eich Roy Lo Adam Lishama Bishmad is how you should guard yourself during this time of Shmad. It's a whole lot of I just want to show you the last page. Flip two, three. You can all do this for homework if you want. I just want to show you the last paragraph on page Kuf Chof. I apologize. There's so much good stuff here. There's a, I printed the Chinuch. A lot of the Chinuch is from the Rambam. Okay, let's do this first. Page Kuf Chaf. Page Kuf Chaf. The Chain. The second arrow. The second arrow on page Kuf Chaf. Ein ro'oi laharchik mechalalei ha-shabosis v'limei seisam. It says, Rambam, do not push away people who, tre- who desecrate Shabbos and disgust them. El lekarvam, embrace them. Huh? What do you say with Rambam, huh? Before the Baal Shem Tev, Midfin of Hanut Yafar and Baal Shem. Ula Zaz Masih Esam Mitzvahs. Page Kuf Chaf, this one right here. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Ula Zaz Masih Esam Mitzvahs, they encourage him to do Mitzvahs. O Klar Pish Rabbi Seyna Zala, Rabbi said, Cha Pe Sheya. If a person sins, in Pasha Mitzvahs, even if he sins with intent, Kesh Yavah Lebe Saknes Asli, his follow when he comes to Shulta Davim, the Kablum Mase. Greet him. Don't shame him. Don't embarrass him. He's finally come to something good. Don't spit in his face. Bring him in. For some who are zemi divri shleime, they rely on this. The words of shleima melech shalma leyevezu leganav. Do not shame a thief. Ki yigne, because he'll steal again. Lamale nafshe ki yirav to satisfy his soul when he's hungry. You know, there's a moedin dika halacha. It's a really, really potent halacha. It's called takonas hashavim. The enactment of the returnees, a bali tshuva, a ganav. He steals from people. He wants to do tshuva. And he comes to you and says, I stole this from you, I want to give it back. He 
You're not allowed to take it from him. It's not locha. A ganav. He stole your silver becha. And he says to you here, I want to give back to you. Api Allah, you shouldn't take it from him. To make his children easier. As they did him. Then if he, the whole thing, if he dies, if his children give it back, if he should take it from them or not, it, it's a very interesting, it's, it's a lot of complicated situations, but the point is, when a person, because it costs money to pay everything back. But it's an actual item. Okay, but if it's cash, if it's guilt, <laughs> he, 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 he embezzled a lot of people money, yeah? And now he's going to have to become a balchoyv, go into debt, to pay back the people he stole from. Don't take his money. Because it's a penalty apart from the... Forget, forget the penalty. It's posh a matter of helping him do children. As it didn't. Go ahead, speak. From his side, from his side, he's supposed to pay everybody back. Well, it's done. But you're not supposed to take it. I understand what you're saying. You're not supposed to take it. And the Rambam writes it... That's because of half money or... But well, don't... Don't take it. So let him do chuba first. I think the Mashmah says even if he has the money. Don't make it, don't make him feel like he's a shmata. Very interesting. It's a Nigel of Maish Bapayel. It's very serious. Al Yovezu Lepesha Yisrael, do not shame sinners of the Jews, shame Boyim Basais and Lignav Mitzvahs who come in secret to steal Mitzvahs. Is it shame or not? Rambam was a Yisrael Zanisht. Now, we have a Chinuch. I don't want to read all the I don't have time. But if you flip a couple more pages, there's one thing I want to show you. Now, I don't know how in heaven you're going to find this. Turn three pages. The page looks like this. <laughs> it's got an arrow. You know what? The page opposite, it says Kufyud. 218. The number is 218. I want to read you this chinuch because I think that Ambam says it somewhere, but I think we missed it. He says, "Interesting zach." We just spoke about Allah of Chil Hashem and Kiddush and we established that there's rules. You can't die whenever you want. A person dies for an aveda, it's a Chil Hashem. Even if it's it's a guy wants to do an aveda, lahaches to anger the Eibush. If it's not public, you're not allowed to do Kiddush Hashem. Because Ambam, we find many people who violate this halacha, beginning with Rabbi Akiva himself. The fact that we find behaviors amongst early Chesidim, who allow themselves to be murdered and killed, even for the, the failure to do a positive mitzvah, not for an Aveda, to, not to a positive mitzvah. Why are you being stoned? Because I circumcised my son. Why are you going to be crucified? I took the Luluf. The Rabbeinu Bechayek quotes this medrash. I saved the page of Rabbeinu Bechayek because it's mentioned here as well. So how do they do it? The same Ram, the Rambam passed number four. That that's, that's a terrible Aveda. So the Chinuch answers a very interesting thing. Midas Chasidus Osu Him. It was an act of Chasidus. Now how do you know if it's suicide or Chasidus? They saw it was necessary for the generation. They were wise enough and great enough and pious enough to pass that this is an exceptional case. That Ambam Paskin, this is a case where you're not allowed to die, and they said, No, you must. Show Moli Kane, who were not for the case. Show you that they were great and wise. They would not be allowed to give their life for this. Not every person has a right to kill himself, to allow himself to be killed. When the rabbi said they're not obligated to the Allah. Moreover, if a person decides to die rather than do one of the Avedas, which is not a mandated thing, you're forfeiting, it's a terrible thing. I always think of the story with Al Tarebe. Al Tarebe was sitting in prison, and they gave him a for food, so he refused to eat. So they tried to force feed him. And they got six goyim, six big behemoths, and they, they ripped open his mouth, and they tried to put the food in. And they locked his jaw, and they couldn't open it. So the famous officer, the same fellow with the ayeka, walks by, and he sees how they're, pushing, they're, 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 they're beating him up. He says, stop! This is not how you talk to this man. And they see the officer, so they, they know that he was a man of great honor. So they stop. And he says, what's going on? 
and the, the, the Altarebbe was viewed as a political prisoner. And political prisoners frequently, when they're caught, commit suicide. So they tell him that he refuses to eat, and he's, he's committing suicide. So he turns to the Altarebbe and says, what's this? He says, it's nothing about suicide. The food's not kosher. So the guy says to the Altarebbe, you can't lend him. But you're not allowed to die for kosher. If you die for kosher, you'll lose your Elam Haba. So Altarebbe says, yeah, Elam Haba, not Elam Haba. I'm not eating today. No one's going to know. It's private. Teves. They have that right. So there's an exception. And by Arabeim, we found that not only took this responsibility upon themselves, they advocated it for others. And Fidik had ever sent Eden into certain death. For what? For what? To be Machana Kiddush Kindalach. For what? They could be Jewish for 100 years. They were Jewish for five more minutes. This is an act of Messiah's Nefesh without any consideration whatsoever. None. Because the outcome was what? What? We saved Yiddishkeit in Russia. We didn't save Yiddishkeit in Russia. What's the problem with Yiddishkeit in Russia? We fought. We defied. We said no. You didn't die after the For what? For what? For generations of what? Rubem Kukulam of these Yidin were assimilated anyway. Achmon al Islam. It was an act of defiance. And the Rebbe took this Achrayas not just on himself, but on his Hasidim. This is the source of that. This is a half of a fella. It's awesome. Isn't that considered Tanzira in Russia? Yeah, but there's a difference between doing an Aveda and doing a Mitzvah. In the time of Shmad, a guy says, do an Aveda, he says, do an but there's a difference between Kumba say and Shavi Al Tase. There's a difference between doing an Aveda to save your life and not doing a mitzvah to save your life. There's a big difference. Especially children, take a Shabbat Rabban. The former mitzvah, the part of the Kalam mitzvah. And the whole Nisidus Nevish was for Tashbat. So you said it was an act of Chasidus. Because, uh, Hasidus means l'flimi shor zadim. We, we're not using the word Hasidus as we use it. I, I as halacha uses it. Beyond the letter of the law. What does this mean over here? Um, Mal, why are you being stoned? Because I circumcised my son. Why are you being crucified? Because I took a lulav. You're not allowed to do that. What does that mean? He took a lulav and they were killing him. A yid. It's time of Hanukkah. This is time. Whatever I boy say. Turn the page. The Ike, I want you to know this. I want to get to the Rebbe's letter here. And then there's two Sikhs which I'm going to have to leave you for homework. But let's at least touch on the Tzamech Tzedek. The next page is from Bidach Mitzvah, it's a short little mitzvah from Tzamech Tzedek. And Tzamech Tzedek, if you will, takes the whole Mesiris Nefesh, Akedah Hashem, and he puts it into vessels. He puts it into structure and order. It's a very interesting mitzvah, a very interesting interpretation, because it's so... It's not radical. It's not hyper. It's it's explaining. It's really it's explaining Messias Nefesh and Kid Hashem in a Kabbalistic context. But Kabbalah is all about Tishtaslus, order, bringing things down. So Machzadik says Messias Nefesh and Kid Hashem are necessary as a part of our relationship with Hashem. And we'll read bits and pieces. I made two arrows. Right at the top of the page. We're reading from the Chinuch, Lakadish Shmeyiz Baruch, we have to sanctify God's name, Shanemar. Top of the page. Vinigdashti, Bateh Bina Yisrael, I will be sanctified amongst the Jewish people. You see what I am? Second line. The Inyazaifa mitzvah, the idea of this mitzvah is Asha Nachnu Mitsubam we're commanded the Farsaim Huamuna Amitis Ba'ilam. We must disseminate the true faith in the world. We should not be fear fear of the damage of any uh, mazik, someone who could damage us. Ba'afalp, even though Shabalina Machriach, someone will coerce us. Lavakesh manu to insist, to demand of us, le kapisenu to force us, shall inishma elam to do an Aveda, shall inishma elam we should listen to him. Avo but rather Nimsa Rasmenu Lamisa, we should give us a love of the Misa, the Lainit Ehu Lachshev, and he should not allow him to be misled, Shikifanu. That we've done makfira. Why do you have to die on Kiddush Hashem? Because if you don't, the guy will think he actually made you believe in Avodah Zarah. You know you don't believe in it. You don't mean the Avodah Zarah. The person who's coercing you is going to be able to say to himself, Ah, I made you believe in such and such. For that guy's opinion, you have to die. That's called Kiddush Hashem. 
It's not for you. It's for him. The Goy, the Rosh Marusha shouldn't be able to say, I convinced the Jew to become Rahman and Islam every time I deserve. Okay, enough. I guess it must be from Sefer HaMitzvah, which I didn't pick. Now, <laughs> look at the second arrow. I'll tell you basically what's written here. You should know there's so many Inyanam in Yiddishkeit that conform to this principle. In other words, Api Hasidus. Tshuva conforms to this principle of Hasidus. It's the same idea, basically. What did happen? And, and there's also the Infatel of the Shema, the Hasidus. Basically, it's a Masari that's like this. Let's, here's Yiddishkeit. Yiddishkeit, believe it or not, it's normal. Normal means reasonable. A Yid can live his whole life, be a perfectly balanced person. Of course, being a Thurma Yid has, makes a lot of demands. But we're not talking about hysterical things. We're talking about living a life, conforming to the model of Tere existence. And it all makes sense. And most mitzvahs have reasons. Certainly the mitzvahs that we perform, we understand why we do them. We see how they benefit us. We're not going out of our box. We're not becoming hyper-extreme. We're not doing anything radical. You could be a perfectly from a yid and never go out of limitations. So the Eibish, they gave us a mitzvah of Mesiris Nefesh. The mitzvah of Mesiris Nefesh is not only for Mesiris Nefesh. It's for all of Yiddishkeit. It's for the normal of Yiddishkeit. The Yiddishkeit should be infused with an infinity. And for Yiddishkeit to be infused with an Ein Sof, there's a mitzvah of Mesiris Nefesh and Kiddush Hashem. In other words, you need to be a radical so that there's something radical, there's something real about every aspect of your life. The normal aspects. So let's read just a little bit. Therefore, you see where I made the arrow and I made the line. To create a union between Ava, Chochma, and Chochma he considers bitter self-sacrifice with Bina. Bina means reason and normalcy. So you want to bring new life into Chochma. May eighteen soft from the eighteen soft shul the mile the mile of yachok was just higher than chokma. Go to the next line. Vahinu dafka idei mesidas nefesh. You have to go out of all limitations. Mesidas nefesh. Shugam kin the mile of masech. It's beyond reason. The law says me go to the goof to go beyond the parameters of your body. Ula hag ben nefesh alakis and to empower the or to overpower the godly soul. Shabetziva haberi is barach bekach which was commanded about mesidas nefesh. Go down to the next the next line. Ukmay Shikosa that Ambam Zal Zambam writes. Shemakhuy is Lim Sen Nafsha Wai be Mesa Nefesh. Shalinit A who did the Goy shouldn't think erroneously, Shekafanu, Ava Bishal Besainu Ma Mini. Says the Rebbe Hine Bazir, when a yid goes out of his limitations. Me aid gam kin la maila, it affects from on high, Gilead himself, Shalamila Maila. Mechaudas Hashem goes out of his limitations. And you're infused and inspired with an ancient of power. To fill the chokma, the azmiri by haharai, the ains of power which descends into the person's chokma, yum shech achakach descends mei chokma the rabbina, ba'asaga from chokma to his understanding, umi shamer liyesmei bechabad zun umhem bechol elu with the flat of shabbat. Because I mean to say, when you do something radical and something extreme, it's not an isolated experience. It infuses your day-to-day life with an ains of potency. So the, the Tzemach Tzedek's insight in the Messiah is never a Kiddush Hashem is he doesn't see it as apart from Yiddishkeit. He sees it as a source. It infuses all of Yiddishkeit with, with the names of power. And you know, that's what Tshuva is. And in Chesed and Chazal, in Chesedus, that's what we call Teira Lishma. Hashem gave us a Teira. Yeah? And what does it say in Zayar? What does it say in Zayar about Teira? The base of the Zayar? Class Kishin is Kashra and Dabada. There were three knots that are linked to one another. Yisrael is Kashra and Bairai, so the Jews are connected to Teda. Bairai is Kashra and Bukutcher, Bichu. Teda attached to Hashem. So which is closer to God? Also the Teda. Teda. We need a Teda to cast Hashem, yeah? What does it say in Sefer Shaboyd? In the, another Sefer? David, or Yemakasha, Teda, Shalmaila, Makadish Barhu. David, our Malach is connected to Teda with the Abish there. It says Chasidis, it's a contradiction. First you say a Jew connects Hashem through the Torah, and now you're saying the Yid is connecting Torah to the Eibushter. And for Chassidus, when a Yid is serving Hashem reasonably, the Torah enlightens him. When a Yid goes on the Siddhas Nefesh, he's infusing into the reasonable Torah the infinity of the Eibushter. And that's how Tzemach Tzedek teaches the Siddhas Nefesh, Hashem. It's not an individual act. It infuses the whole Yiddishkeit 
with infinity. Unre- that's what tshuva is, that's what mesilis nefesh is, and so on. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. So is the unreasonable act that you would actually sacrifice your life for the sake of a goy's opinion? Yeah, but not necessarily. It can be something even much less than that. It could be Yisrael Shabachor Aspoir. If your presence in your place of employment is honorable, it's a Kiddush Hashem. It brings the Abish into the world. The Yeh's Shem Shemaim is Ayah. Other people should say, because of him, I love his God. But that's not an act of outrageousness. That's an act of normalcy. Okay. But it's Kiddush Hashem. And it has a similar effect. Okay. And he, go, he speaks about the Rebbe Lozabed to die. Okay, enough. So the Tzermach Tzedek, you can read this on your own. Tzermach Tzedek is very nice. It's very balabatish. You know, we're used to the Friedrich Rebbe's regular diet of Mesiris Nefesh. This is a different, this is Mesiris Nefesh. Mesiris Nefesh means bringing something transcendent into your reasonable life. And it changes everything. Now Rabbi Isai, we have the famous Ha'oz, a very famous, a classic Ha'oz of the Rebbe, and then there's two sikhs. And it's a pity, it's such a pity. The sikhs are moidendik. We never talks about Hanukkah. You know what I'll do? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you the sikhs first, orally. And then I'll come back and I'll read parts of this order. I don't need more than five, ten minutes. And I mean, <laughs> this is retarded. Okay, I, I thank you for listening. But how could you not learn this? Um, first the sikhs. They talks about Hanukkah. Two different sikhs. And the episode is like this. There are all these different levels of Messiah the Snefesh. Did Messiah's Nefesh? Did Messiah's Nefesh a Kiddush Hashem be Farhesia in a public situation? And did Messiah's Nefesh a Shas Hashma? The three categories that Amman spoke about. Yeah? But there's one rule about Messiah's Nefesh. The guy comes to you and says sin. And you say no. And you give your life. What about you going to the guy to give your life? You ought to do that. You going to the guy. You chase the guy down and say kill me because I'm a Jew. There's, there's, there's no such level of Mesidus Nefesh. Says the Rebbe, what's the story of Hanukkah? Israel was, was occupied. Jerusalem was under siege. They ran into the hills. Now, could they have stayed in the hills indefinitely? No. But they certainly could have prolonged their lives. It was, the Jews were good fighters. It was, it, was, it, was, you know, it was like the Chechen situation. It was very, very difficult terrain. They knew it better than the, than the Syrian Greeks. They could have kept them off for years. What they do? They came into the valley and engaged them. They didn't wait for the Greeks to come to them. They made a war. So the Rebbe, which rabbi did they get permission for that from? Which level of the sin is nefesh is it? The first one, the second, and the third one? It's none. It's the fourth. There's no halachic justification for it. None. Zero. Bracket. Interruption. This explains what the Gemara says in Shabbos. That it took the Racham a whole year to make Hanukkah a Yom the miracle occurred, they found the oil, they came to the rabbis, they make a howdah, the rabbi said, wait a second. Lashana Acheres, Kofim Big Mara says. Took him a year, it took a year, it took a year. What took a year? Such a miracle. Because there's a shayl in Allah, if they were allowed to do what they did. You go and you start a war with an army that's a thousand times your size? It's suicide. There's the infamous Sirius Nefesh. There's the infamous Sirius Nefesh, Al Kiddush Hashem, Befar Hesir. There's the infamous Sirius Nefesh, Al Shmad. But to go to the guy and say, kill me? It was certain death. So the Chachanim took a year and they said, yeah, this, this is another Madrege Mesiris Nefesh. What's the Pshat? The Pshat is the Rambam, the Chinuch they read earlier, that sometimes Chassidim, Gedolim come along and they say, now there's no Cheshboinus, not even Cheshboinus in the Shulchan Now you have to act. Now you have to say to the Goy, I'm defying you. Kill me, but I'm defying you. Like the Rambam mentions, Chana and his seven children. What's the point? You're not going to break me. Like the Fiyadik Rebbe. The Fiyadik Rebbe sent people on Messiah's Nefesh. He didn't expect to win. He had no way to hear to expect it. He, he was going to defeat the Soviets. He was going to defy them. Defy them to the last drop of blood. That was the program. That was the mission. And the Rebbe says that the reason it collapsed, the way it collapsed, and as quickly as it collapsed, 70 years is a long time, but it could have lasted 700 years, is because of that Messiah's Nefesh. The Messiah's Nefesh was not for naught. But it's completely unreasonable. There's no basis in data whatsoever. So these are the two sikhs that follow this. We'll finish the class with this footnote from the Reb. And we have to begin um, on page 121. Yeah, the place 121. Now, I, I should have made one more arrow. No, 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 no. Uh, it's right here. 
Oh, my mistake. Here's 123. That's it. 121, right there. In the middle of this page, it says something really, really odd. And the source of it is the Shadi Eidah from the middle of Rebbe. But you're going to have to help me find it. It's the line that begins with the word Ha'ora. I should have made an arrow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lines from the top. And I bet it's 10 lines from the bottom. The Maiva from the previous Rebbe with a footnote of the Rebbe. The Rebbe used to write footnotes. You with me? Therefore, Mesiris Nefesh is never stated explicitly in Tere Shebeksav. Liyeh Tere Shebeksav Yibachinas Chachma because the biblical Tere is only the level of intellect. Vachachma Pitam Vadaz Davke Chachma is reasonable and Mesiris Nefesh is higher than reason. Now, Tere Kasha. The Rambam says, "But Fedish, when it dashed him, he said, 'From the Yisrael, it's a mitzvah to serve Kiddush Hashem.'" Rashi says it. The Rambam says it. The Chinuch and the Rebbe lists a whole bunch of many mitzvahs. Kumt again, the middle of the Rebbe, the Fedish have a quote and verbatim. No such mitzvah as Kiddush Hashem. No mitzvah as Kiddush Hashem. What are you talking about? It's a pasuk chomish. And the Rambam enumerates three categories that we had earlier, right? So the Rebbe says, now go to the bottom of the page. I don't understand this. It's an explicitly biblical commandment. In our Pasha, and it's and it goes on and on and on. The Rebbe goes into Ariches. I don't have time. It, the Rebbe has one answer and a second answer and a third answer, a bunch of different answers. But go to page 123 now. Go to the end. Just flip the page. Well, again, and he says, the answer to the question is as follows. 123. Okay? The When the Rambam says that we learn from the Nekdashti, it's a Mitzvah that I say. When my modern say that it's not written in the Chumash, my modern know the Rambam. <laughs> in the middle, I didn't forget the Rambam. But there's two ideas in the Sidus Nefesh. And listen to how the Rebbe words it. There's my modern and Sikh, I saw this also. Put him touching it out, I spoke about it, and so on. Aleph, there's two ideas in the Nefesh. Idea number one, Mashi Prat be Mitzvah Sacheras. There's a counter in the Sidus Nefesh, which is part and parcel of other mitzvahs. Hainu, this means. You're not dying to sanctify God's name. You're just not worshipping idols. You're not dying to sanctify God's name. You're not just committing adultery. You're not dying to sanctify God's name. You're just not committing murder. If it costs you your life, fine. But your issue is not to give your life. Your issue is not to sin in a specific sin. What you're doing is keeping mitzvahs of Eidazara, the mitzvah of Gilead, the even if you're going to be killed, because they're Makayim, you fulfill the mitzvah. But what you're doing is not giving your life you're keeping a mitzvah to the point where it costs you your life. The focus is on the mitzvah, not on the Kiddush Hashem. Which I said before, it's called Mesidus Nefesh, as opposed to Mesidus Nefesh on Kiddush Hashem. The Kiva, and because, says the Heilig Rebbe, Shebechlal, that in general, Avedazal Yilayz V'chuli, Hemet Pitam V'das, notice that the Rebbe avoids writing Shvich Hasdomim. He writes in both cases V'chuli. You see? He doesn't want to write the word murder. He says, idolatry, adultery, etc. He doesn't want to write the word murder. Hey, ma pita It's reasonable. It's reasonable not to commit adultery. It's reasonable not to worship idols, etc. Sheyachem him gam lebni neich to have a relationship with Goyim as well. Ve'ein leheiti neich mechiyev kiyumu mikrem beidadim. Okay, and so on and so forth. But this idea of mesiras nefesh is logical. Now, since this idea of mesiras nefesh is logical, it's written in the Torah. Rambam's discussion of Mesir Nefesh is a reasonable discussion. Certain things are worth dying for. But then there's Bayes. Mashi Mitzvah Mifneyatzma. There's a separate idea. It has nothing to do with not with the disorder, not, not with idolatry, not with adultery, etc. Not with anything else. It's the act of sanctifying God's name for the sake of the sanctity. Limsir Nefesh al Kiddush Hashem. The Kama find the Bikiyuma, there's a variety of different ways of doing it. I guess the Masana, not transgressing the small the sin. This idea of Mesir Nefesh, this idea of not doing a sin and dying for it, 
not because you don't want to sin, because you want to sanctify God's name, that's not rational, and it doesn't apply to Goy. It doesn't apply to? Non-Jews, because mitzvahs of non-Jews have to be reasonable. So, the Rebbe says, that when the middle of the Rebbe writes, and the Rebbe quotes, the Rebbe says, the Rebbe says, is not written in the Teda, he means the second thing. You see, the Rebbe is very cryptic, the Rebbe is very vague, but this is the Pshat, and in later my modern and this, this Ha'ara is Mishtam Kama Apa. It's written in a way you could read it in many different ways. I mean, I've learned over this Ha'ara a hundred times. It's deliberately written that you're not sure what he's saying. And in the Sikhs and the Maimadam later on, the Rebbe explained this much more comprehensively, much more unequivocally. But he's saying essentially that the Nisidus Nefesh, which is a mitzvah, because it's reasonable. And the Nisidus Nefesh, which doesn't do it, mitzvahs. Kiddush Hashem. That's not included in the Nikdashti. The Chiddush is Vinikdashi only refers to the first category and the second category. Even though the Rambam puts it all together. But he suggests that part of it is Deiraise and part of it is only Benamaseira, Benabona, it's afterwards. And I want to finish the class with a story. A Maisepel. I heard this story from Rabbi Yossi Jacobson. He heard the story from his brother in law, Zavdi, who heard the story from the Baal HaMaisa. He was sitting on a plane, going to or from Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Rabbi Jacobson's wife is from Pittsburgh. And uh, he's sitting next to an Israeli, a fellow, middle-aged man, who doesn't have a left arm. Amputated his arm. And they're sitting and staring at each other, looking at each other across the aisle. And finally, this other fellow says to him, Atame Chabad, you're the Lubavitcher? He says, yeah. You knew the Lubavitcher Rebbe? This, was, this story happened in the last five years. You knew the Lubavitcher Rebbe? He says, yeah. I'll tell you a story about the Rabbi Malabavich. And he tells him the following episode. He was a war hero from the Yom Kippur War, Nebuch. And he lost his arm. Lost the left arm in the war in battle. And the Israeli government, with the collaboration of the American government, arranged a tour for the invalids, for the wounded, several hundred Israeli boys who had been wounded in the war were given a tour of America. They traveled to America. And they were able to visit the Rebbe. They came to 770, the Rebbe spoke for them, and the Rebbe then said that you shouldn't call them invalids. You should call them Mitzvayanim, exceptional. This idea, which is universally accepted in the world, that a person who's not well, you don't call them sick, you call them unusual, special children. This is, this is Mambash Afat Salah, this comes from 770. A hospital is called the base of the Fuwa, a house of healing, not a house of sick people. These ideas come from 770, and they've saturated the world. And then the Rebbe went from wheelchair to wheelchair, giving them dollars, rather than approaching him. And then they had Yechidus, they can go into the Rebbe, it's 1977, I believe. He said, I went into the Rebbe, and I was told, you know, and I'm not nice. in and out, don't waste the Rebbe's time. So I walked into the Rebbe, and I said, whatever, you told the Rebbe, it's killer. And then I said, Harabim Malabarich. And the Yechol is all Sheila. Lubavitcher Rebbe. Can I ask a question? You're about to find out why you don't want to be the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Okay? So the Rebbe says, you can ask. He tells the Rebbe the following. During the war, we were in the Sinai. And we were too far ahead of the front. They were too good. And they were circled. They were surrounded by Egyptians. Arik Sharon. Ready to yo them. He says to them, you are surrounded, you're sitting ducks, we cannot help you. Finish. You're ready to die. So this is a group of company, a t- well, 20, 25 boys, how many it was, sitting on the sand with their tank, or two tanks, whatever it was they had, waiting to die. You can understand the mood. And they sat there an hour, two hours, three hours, holding you to sit. It was very depressing. One boy in the group was from and after the depression got so thick he could touch it, he gets up. He says, Chevre, why do they hate us so much? Why do they want to kill us? And he gives them the Mesidus Nefesh talk. The real Mesidus Nefesh HaKidosh Hashem talk. He says, we are in the same spirit of Purim and Hanukkah and this, the, the, the Spanish Muranos and the Jews in the Holocaust were being killed because of the Jewish. Well then, let's die like Jews. Let's fight to the last man. Let's give them, let's give them the best we got. And he inspired them. And they came out of this depression and they waited to fight. 
And I said to myself, this man says to the Rebbe, that if I'll survive, I'll put film on every day. Eventually the Egyptians found us, and there was a bitter fight, went on for hours. And they withdrew. They left us alone. And then we counted our losses. Everybody was fine. That film boy was dead. And I lost my left arm. That's it. Well, Baba Chereb, explain this to me. This boy who had all inspired all of us lost his life. I committed myself to put up film. I can't wear a couple of It's fun to be the Rebbe. This is a regular diet. If the Rebbe gets on a regular basis. So Rebbe puts his head down. He thinks for a moment. He raises his head. And he says, Ken, I can't answer you. And the Rebbe tells him like this. When, no questions. No questions. When that young boy got up in front of all of you, and he spoke about Mr. Snefesh. He inspired himself to be Mason Nefesh. He, made, he readied himself to die as a Jew. And the Abish decided to accept his carbon, to accept his sacrifice. And the Abish wants you to know that his love for you is not because of the mitzvahs that you perform. It's 